Hey, quick disclaimer. The Starting Over House opened its doors 19 years ago with the intention of helping people reframe painful experiences that were holding us back. This was shared with the world in hopes of helping even more people grow. That said, it's still a show and editing for TV doesn't tell the whole story. Mental health in our overall culture has changed a lot in those 19 years and I imagine that's probably why you can't find Starting Over streaming anywhere else right now. So please be mindful of that. We were all different people then, we're all different people now, and so are you. So laugh, cry, and learn with us. But please, be kind. He's a girl, he's a girl. Reinventing themselves. This house changed my life. Starting over. Life has never been this real. Previously on Starting Over, Josie arrived at the first Starting Over house pregnant and alone. My grandma just passed away last April. I was living with my boyfriend and basically threw me out. She had her baby Chloe, but left the house because she couldn't move forward without knowing who Chloe belonged to. So she returned to finish her quest. Today I am getting a call to find out the DNA results on whether Jonathan is Chloe's father. Sinead opened up to her roommates about her newest challenge. You're blind? You just look directly at people for blind person. I'm thinking in my mind, how can you be blind? Meanwhile, the relationship between Deborah and her roommates began to sour. You can't say you don't care because you kept saying, you wanna drive, you wanna drive. If you didn't care, you wouldn't have asking that. And Jennifer started to reveal what ripped her family apart. We saw mom, we saw best friend, we saw, where's dad? Dad's in jail. What time's your meeting? Nine. What time is it? God only knows. Tell me about it. Today I'm going to be revealing the DNA test results. You're silly. Knowing who Chloe's father is, I think that Rhonda can actually help me fix the things that I need to fix for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, little girl. Hey, good morning. I'm in a better mood now that I napped. I'm not a grumpy butt. Okay, are you ready to talk about why your father went to prison and what yeah, happened? Yeah, I just told Josie. He missed but it. But what happened? He was dealing drugs. What kind of drugs? I think it was meth, like back when meth came out. Mm. Was I he think... doing him? Mm-hmm. And so he got caught mm-hmm. dealing him? Mm-hmm. How long did he get sentenced for? Life. What? For drugs? Yep. A, it was a federal crime because it was across state borders. I didn't know you could get sentenced to life for that. Well, he had, like, guns involved somehow. And yeah, it carries a mandatory sentence, a mandatory life sentence. You're kidding. No. Now, do you see him? I haven't seen him probably since I was in high school. Probably so like when did he, how old were you when he went to prison? Twelve. Wow. That's a tough age, too. Mm-hmm. Really tough. And so where is he in prison? In Florence, Colorado. <laughs> but you don't go see him? No. I haven't seen him, and I don't feel comfortable there. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't... I so don't, I don't hardly talk to him. Like, there was a time where I didn't talk to him for, like, eight or nine months. He didn't even try to call. And, like, I can't call him. So I just don't go because, like, I have a hard time having a conversation with him. Like, I've seriously never even received an apology from him. Like, he left our family in no good of a position at that. And he's never even said he was sorry. Really? Because that that puts a bad name on your family. Yeah. You know, because people associate that with you. In listening to Jennifer's story about how her father and her relationship was just drastically interrupted, it's very frightening to think that that's how it could be for Chloe and her father. Him and my mom talk every Saturday. Are they still together? Mm Mm-hmm. So she hasn't divorced him? Mm Mm-mm. And how do you feel about that? That's one of my things that I'm mad at her for. Yeah. Because I would have done it differently. Mm Mm-hmm. But for life, 
You right. will never be able to get out, right? Well, or is there a chance? There's a chance, because they could overturn something. Like, there's always a chance. Uh, okay. I need you to bring my pillow. Your pillow? You got a favorite pillow at home? Or something? Yeah, my, my, my pillow's with the blue case. Pillow my with bed. the blue case? Yes. I need you to send me that pillow. I have to call you later with where to send it, but I really need that pillow. <laughs> Dang, your favorite pillow left behind, huh? Yeah, my ra my roommate barely wants to sleep with me because I snore. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you got roommate? I thought you had your own room. No, it's this huge house, but this roommate thing is supposed to teach us something. Oh, really? That wow. you don't want to sleep with a woman and get on you, have her getting on your last nerve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think a man, I, I, you know, I haven't slept with anybody for years, you know. Yeah, damn, no. So it's like, um, you know, I guess if I get a man, I guess he'll have to love me enough to put up with my snoring. Hi, Sine. Hi, Sine. Hi. This is Vince. He's an orientation and mobility specialist. When you say orientation and mobility, it's kind of a tip for white cane or dog or something. Well, I wanted to bring Vince in today to support you because I know that you have a uh, eyesight challenge. So why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Okay, well, I'm legally blind. It's kind of a new thing for me. There's currently no diagnosis for my vision. Something in my retina didn't form because I'm an albino. They say that it's not gonna get any better, but they don't think that it'll get any worse. And so tell me about legally blind. What does that mean? What can you see? What can't you see? That kind of varies. It kind of depends. Um, hmm. uh, I can see light and dark, of course. Everybody, I think, in the house has pretty much gotten that. And colors and shapes. Um, I don't see fine detail. Um, things are pretty blurry. Um, sometimes I don't see all the steps. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting that. And if there's a handrail, pretty set. Um, sometimes I'm not sure if it's a step or it's mm -hmm. flat. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, stuff like that. Well, that's what's okay. been here to support you with. Really feeling safe and secure in the starting over house and to feel safe and secure as you're growing and changing and getting used to this eyesight thing. Cool. I hope in the starting over house, I gain the experience I need to be able to um, live a productive life on my own without anybody's help. I won't know until we've, we've traveled around together a little bit whether I think you uh, need a mobility device like a long cane. Has that ever come up? Like, I'm sure it would help a lot, but it's hard emotionally. It's kind of like, a, oh, she's blind. It's like it a, is. an instant identifier. Sine has a real aversion to using the cane. I think she's having a hard time accepting that there will be a public perception of her as a visually impaired person. It does identify you to people in the public as mm -hmm. someone with a visual impairment, and it's something you got to get used to. Hi, Lauren. How you living? Oh, no, we're good. Good, 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 good. So you're gonna sit on the sofa and I'm gonna sit right here. Sit over here so we can see how you're doing this morning. I really wanna acknowledge you for just being so willing. But I also wanna offer you probably your first healing clue because you said yesterday, I don't trust people. That's not true. <laughs> You trusted me yesterday, and you're going to trust me today. That's what I was just thinking. I'm like, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's so weird. What, what makes it feel like you don't trust people? What, is, what, is, what makes it feel like just that? Just a doubt. Like, I think people who can hurt me, like friends or my family, those are the ones that I don't trust. Like, the ones that can hurt my heart, mm -hmm. that's when I don't trust. Is it that you don't trust them, or is it that you expect it to be the same? I expect it to be the same. Okay, well, that's a different thing. So we can always work on changing expectations, yeah? So we're going to do some work today that I think is going to be very, very um, powerful for you. Do you think you're connected to your actual feelings? Is that something you'd like to do? Would you really? Yes, really. Yeah. Sit back. I want you to sit back. Just let your body relax, Jen. Think this in your mind. 
What keeps me from moving forward in my life? Think that, and then as something comes forward, speak it out. What keeps me from moving forward is? Fear. Fear, good. What keeps me from moving forward is? Change. Change, good. Can I tell you a secret, Jen? Right now, you are home. That place inside where you are safe, yeah, let it come up, where you are nurtured. This is a new home, Jen. This is not like the home you know. And this home doesn't have to be frightening. This home doesn't have to be violent. You can be safe here. Just rest at home for a moment, Jen. This is home, my love. This is the place that you've been looking for forever, isn't it? Yeah. This is the place that you've been looking for forever, isn't it? Talk to me about what home would be like for you, the home you've always wanted. Talk to me about that. Happy. Happy. Love. Love. Yeah. Safe. Safe. How old is the little girl that needs to be safe at home? How old is she? Six. Six, yeah. Can you see her, feel her? Is she right there with you? In your mind, talk to her. Let that little one know she's safe. What do you want to say to her, Jen? It's okay. What else does she need to know? That she's loved. That she's loved. Tell her, I love you, sweetie. I love you. Yeah, yeah. I love you, little Jen. <laughs> Yeah. And today, you and her are going to do some work that's going to help build a better home. I thought that home was a place, like a physical location that you call home. And as I'm doing the exercise with Ilanya, I'm realizing that home is somewhere in your heart and not an actual location. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. I want you to open up to a clean page in your journal for me. And what we're going to do is we're going to write down those things that we know keep you from getting what you want. We know that fear keeps you from getting what you want. Fear of the unknown. Fear of being alone. So those we've got, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we got them. Where did we get them from? My wow. So what we're going to do is these are bricks. And on each one of these bricks, what I want you to do is write down one of those things, okay? So you just take your marker and you write it down. Good. That's one brick. Excellent. Good. Here's another. Excellent. Excellent. So you can do this, right? Okay, so I want to take you and show you something. Let's get your book, get your pen. We're going to go outside by the pool. You hold your own fear. I got enough of my own. <laughs> OK. This is not cool, because all the wood yeah. kind of blends together. Yeah. What I see is really blurry. You do have a bit of contrast here at the top. The first step, you can, mm -hmm. you can pretty, pretty much make that out. Mm -hmm. Good. So you're, you're doing this for yourself already, right? I mean, it's something that, that you just have to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm noticing something else right away. The, uh, the door going out to the terrace has kind of a door jam. So if you're coming in or out of a door like this around the house, you're likely to find a little step there like that. So we're just going to identify those points around the house for you that, that you might need to be more careful. But stairs like this <laughs> going down, that's, there's no contrast there. Mm -mm. But, but really, as you approach this stairway, yeah, I'm pretty How does sure it look? You can tell it's well, going down. It's just kind of like a, like a slope. I'll go ahead, and I'm just gonna <laughs> watch. You know where you, how you're using your eyes, and how you do going down down a set of stairs like this. Stairs are a challenge because depending on the time of the day where the sun is, sometimes to me it looks flat. It doesn't even appear that there are stairs. <laughs> All right, very nice. <laughs> like me when it comes to yeah. an invasion of your space, of your personal space. Exactly. If to you, it's not cool that you use your perfume. It's not cool that you used your towel, you know? So you say, look, Deborah, yeah. if you ask me, I don't mind. And that's what I told her. You know, that's what I said. But 
And it's anybody. It's just you ask know, it's me not first. Even a personal, it's just yeah. yeah no, it's you anybody. have to ask. Yeah. I would never just. You have to just respect other people's things. Yes. Just period. Yes. Yes. Been in the pool yet? No. Okay. Well, get those toesies wet. I'm thinking that she's gonna have me do something like throw the three bricks in the pool or throw them over the balcony to get rid of them. And then I see a blue tarp by our pool. All righty, Jen. So I've got something for you, buddy. I've got All something right. for you. Oh God. <laughs> 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 These people don't mess around. You've got some bricks here. Mm -hmm. On each one of these bricks, my love, I want you to write something that you know that keeps you from moving forward in your life. It could be a thought. It could be a feeling. It could be an experience. And now you know how to go in there and get that. Give everything its own brick. Okay. Can you do that? I can. Okay, so you've got some time. I'm going to come back at 4 o'clock, and, and these bricks are going to be filled, and then, and then we're going we're gonna to do something special with these bricks, okay? Work with little Jen. Don't abandon her. Okay. Oh, that's one, abandonment. Ooh, -hoo -ah. <laughs> let me leave. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I'm feeling all of the emotions that I've turned off for so long. The hurt, the anger, the disappointment. So then I brought a roll of really bright yellow tape. You know, I could put a stripe of it at the top of the stairs if you think it would help you. Now you're using the handrail really well, but something like that at the top step, like a, just a strip of tape, would that yeah. maybe help you know? Or maybe like at this one, then I can the see The top and like, the bottom? Yeah, that I'm that's, not... That's standard in a public place. It, you know, it should be there for you. A, a strip oh, of yeah. bright color. Oh yeah, I never really thought about that. What do you think? Good stuff. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Not too stylish, but pretty helpful. Not too bad? All right. I think once we get out and hit the streets, we're going to take it in baby steps, you know, little <laughs> bits at a time. Now let's talk about the long game. You've got tall shoes on. Yeah. You brought two different sizes, just, just guessing. The cane is a real shocker. It's frustrating to all of a sudden be handed a cane and say, okay, here's how to use it. Use it. <laughs> sure right. is lovely. This is it. This is what I've been reduced to. You can't escape people knowing you're blind if you have a white cane in your hand. You're like, ew, I don't want to hold it, ew. Yeah. Yeah, is that how you're feeling? Kind of. It's kind of like a definite assurance that this is for real. I think Sine is a little ashamed, a little embarrassed by using the cane. I think she doesn't want anyone to know that she's legally blind. But the bottom line is for her to become independent, to be her own woman, she must use the skills and tools available. The movement of the cane should come from your wrist. So when you step forward with your left foot, you're again moving the cane to your right. So it's ready for this one. Mm-hmm. And we'll just do a couple steps forward. I don't have a long, a long walk here, but just take. Good, yeah, before your left foot steps forward, you move the cane to the right. Strolling through the park. What do you want? Do you want this? I feel like I could probably fill out a few more bricks, but I am getting out enough frustrations and hurt on the bricks that I did fill out. Are you done, Jennifer? I, I am. Good. Yeah, I'm done. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, she brought the clean oh, today. Oh, you We brought some, too. It's a good thing. Excellent. <laughs> and so today we're going to find out about Sine. And Sine, how was this morning? How was working with Vince? Awesome. Yeah? It was very scary at first. Yeah? But it turned out to be a really great experience. And what about your judgments of the scene, the cane with the red tip? Before mm -hmm. today, I was like, okay, well, that's like 
a disability or a disadvantage, but now I realize that it really is to my advantage to use a cane. Now tell me why. I can be easily identified by drivers mm -hmm. and other people um, what, that before I might have been angry or perturbed mm. that they did not recognize that I was blind. Let's go to the plasma and find out a little bit more about you and, and hear about your journey. That's where I live. If you were to step outside of my house and look around, this is pretty much mm. what you would see. And in the background, um, those mountains back there, that's where I usually ski. Oh, that's my best friend. She's my best friend from college. And she was actually there the day that I lost my vision. She was the first person to know. And how did you lose your vision? It kind of just happened, just out of blue. I was working on a project and I looked up and I was like, man, my vision seems really blurry, so I was like kind of freaking out because I was like, okay, well, it should, it should go away by itself. So I rested for a while and I opened my eyes again and I was like, okay, now we have a problem. So I talked to Lena about it. And then did you go to the hospital? Did your mom come take yeah, you to the hospital? Yeah, we went to the hospital. My mom was on a trip and so Lena was right there. And how did it feel not to have your mom there and must have been kind of it was scary. It was very strange and very scary, but on the other hand, it was a good experience mm -hmm. to not have my mom there and to deal with a big life situation without my mother. Hey, are you saying to me that you and your mom are close or not close? Very or close. Very close. Very close. I think we're dependent on each other. Very dependent on each other. Okay. Did I hear why? The cause? Did I hear that or did I just miss it? They don't know. They don't have any idea at all, period. Yep, we're all in the same boat in this room. Well, no, I'm, I'm just saying, because that would be kind of scary. It's very scary. But then that's like being a widow. A lot of women will say, poor thing. And then inside they're saying, ooh, sure hope don't happen to me. Glad it ain't me. Deborah needs attention. She needs attention. And in order to check herself, to find out if she's okay, she is going to make this group about Sine, about her. Do you feel it's unfair? Life's unfair. I can honestly say I have not said, why me? Because it's not like I was just randomly selected from the heavens to be all of a sudden one day blind. It happens to a lot of people. What it's not it? just me. Let's go back to I don't care. What do you mean? There's a reason. OK. And you know, I So do you care about the reason? I have no idea. Mm. I, that's why I told you that my mom was legally blind, because I've grown up with it my whole life. I know what it's like to not be able to see the piece of paper where you're supposed to sign your check. I understand. And I just really think that we're going to help each other. And are there ways that you're going to help her? But she already has <laughs> so much. Because I can see, I, I really can, I can see that you're, I, I'm not going to say that you're embarrassed by it, but I can see that, I see that you're hurt. And I know if you don't want us to think, oh, I'm just a helpless blind person, please hold my hand around the house. When Sine said that she was blind, I, I couldn't believe it because I said, okay, she, she, walked, she was able to walk in the house. She was able to walk down the steps. She looks at me when I speak to her, and I just think that she's a wise young lady. Confident. She's a very, very, very wise young lady. And isn't it possible that we're just getting a new definition for blindness? Yes. Because some of us with two fully sighted eyes still can't see. And so is, is one of the things that you're in the starting house for accepting your blindness? I need to define it for myself. Know what it is for me to be blind as a person, as a student, as a friend, as the daughter. Tell me about your relationship with your mom, because right there you look really <laughs> close and you've told us that you think you're dependent on each other. Oh, we are. Definitely. Are you the only child? Of hers? Yes. And what do you mean of hers? My parents have both been remarried, so there's okay. a lot of kids. Okay, so your dad has been remarried, and where's he in his relationship with you? Hmm. Well, he lives down the street, but we don't really talk. And it's a sad reality. Is that something you but want? But I don't currently want to pursue a relationship with my father. He's in timeout. He's in timeout. Because I was in timeout. Because I was sick, and I was always last. to pursue a relationship with my mother. Because I was sick and I was always last.
You were second, and you were always last in his world, in his life. In his family, in his new family. So you put him in time out. How long were you in time out? Since I was two. And when did you decide to put him in time out? Like when I was 11. I know where she's coming from because like her, I feel like my father picked me second as well. And I feel like that's just one more thing that the both of us have in common. How many other people in this room have daddy challenges, issues with daddy? Wow, we, boy. Yeah, we all got dad issues. Early on, we found that out. Well, daddy is a very, very important man in all of our lives, whether we want to believe it or not, and whether we want to accept it or not. And so, Yana and I will be doing much work with that. Daddy <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk about that for many weeks. <laughs> so let's see the self-portrait you drew that brought you here. Oh, From here, it look. I'm not sure if it means stop, mom, or mom stop. It's a whole lot of mom stop. Helping you? Yeah. Sassy. On the top of the um, the paper, it says 101 things I need to do for Sine, because. Uh, she really helps a lot and helps me fill out paperwork and does so much stuff for me and I think it's a burden. How can it not be a burden? I want to go towards her goal so that she knows what she's working on in this house. So, Nay, your goal is develop independence. Uh -huh. How would you know when you achieve that goal of develop independence? I don't have to call mom when I'm lost. Yeah. Somewhere. And I got there on my own. I can make my own choices and know that I've done something okay without my mom's help. Well, knowing that's true for you, Sine, and I know that we will do that together. Ladies, we'll be meeting again at 7 o'clock. See you at 7, ladies. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Okay, I'm going. By myself in the car. Are you going to Target? I don't know where Target is. Can't you go on that, that website thing? Sephora really needs directions to the store. And I told her to go on the computer and get the directions. How would you know where you were in proximity to whatever Ralph's is? That's okay, what I'm you saying. Have your address here, and if you look in the phone book, you have the address of where you're going and where you want to be. You type it in the computer, and bam, or where you want to be so and where you start. That makes sense to me, but I'm kind of slow. You can probably even call 411, and then you don't even need to right. look in the phone book. Okay, so, so can somebody do that? Because I'm not. Um, Computer savvy. I could drive there with the directions. I'll help you. Or I'll help you on the computer. By telling me to go and call no, no, 411? Call. Yeah. Okay, Sine, let's do it. Okay. Wow, -ee wow. Wow, I always feel stupid. Holding on to familiar. We know that one. Now, of the ones that you see, Jen, mm -hmm. what do you think is at the, the bottom, the, the foundation, the core of you not being able to move forward? What, do, what, do, what would you see? Just give me three that you think. One. Don't trust my feelings. Two. Holding on to the familiar. Three. Don't want to do it different. So you would say these three are at the core, at the foundation. From what I see, from yeah. From what you see. Talk to me about guilt from moving away from home. That's a big one. Yes. I bet that's a big one. Because I've always that. been the helper. Mm -hmm. Ever since I can remember, I've always helped my mom. Here it is right here. Afraid of leaving mom. There came a point in time when I decided I was going to move out. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have a lot of guilt for leaving because okay. I'm not there to take care of her anymore. Talk to me about, I don't like myself. I don't like the way that I am. How are you, Jen? Closed. And what else? Uh, what about that? Weak. weak. Are you that? I think I'm weak because I try to put on this strong front. Because the truth is, you're really not strong because you don't trust. Trust. Mm -hmm. I want you to go home. You know how to go home because mm -hmm. we learned how to do that this morning. We did. Take a nice deep breath. You to open your eyes and just have, look around. This is your prison, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. 
Just like your dad's in prison, you're in prison. And all of these bricks to your prison are in your mind. Mm -hmm. In your mind. Okay, in order for you to get to the store today, you may have to get on the computer, and if some of us... If it means getting on the computer, then I won't be going to the store today. Somebody that's more savvy will Why? do it. Because I don't choose not to do that. And I'm sorry that you chose that for yourself. Don't be sorry for me. I'm pity. just fine. Pity. Don't pity me. I'm just fine. Deborah has asked for help, but she really wants me to do it for her. I don't want to do it. I pity I'm you. Just fine. Obviously not. Don't pity me. You know what? I want some hand weights, okay? I'll figure out a way to get some hand weights. Believe me, there's always another way to do something. So why don't you come on out and we're gonna look at the steps we need to take, because we know your goal, right? Right. Your goal is? To heal and know love. Let's just have a seat over here. So what I want to encourage you to do is just so that we can be clear. Even though you wrote these bricks, I want you to make a list. Go through that prison and make a list, and we're going to start ticking those things off one at a time as we do our work together. Would you like to mend your relationship with your dad? get the chance to it. Now, how about a nice hug? Thank you. Thank you so much. You know what? I think that's so rude. I mean, I didn't tell you, I pity you because you're blind. I never no, said that. No, you did not even let me finish, though. I never said that. No. Don't pity me. I'm just fine. I pity you because you do not take the initiative to explore the rest of the world. I've and been all options. over this world. You I'm don't talking about me. You're not you know listening to me. You're not listening. Don't pity me. Please don't do pity be me. angry. Don't pity I me. Do pity don't pity I do me. pity you. I don't need your pity. I, you may not need my pity. I don't need it. I don't want it, OK? No, but if I couldn't you be pitiful not about you to because me. you're blind, and I'm pitiful because I don't want to be on the computer, No, that that's is not it. You have what you said. You pity me because I'm not even... opening up the world of the internet. I have, you know, I that's, did there's not a whole lot of people internet. like that. It's not about the internet, Deborah. I pity you. Can I finish? Can Don't you pity not? Me. Can you not say anything until Don't I have a complete me. sentence and walk out of the room? I think you better you get a, you, another word. I don't need your pity. You might feel, say, I feel sorry for you because you don't want to get okay, on the computer. Can, but no, pity? Do you want to get the dictionary and and define pity? It's right here. Oh me? You want to know why? Okay. Well, let me get my pitiful ass out of here then. Deborah, you need. Yeah, I'm so I pitiful. I'm you so need pitiful. Need it's, I didn't say that, but you did not let me finish. Oh, there she is. Sinead, are you okay? Don't let her get to you. We love you. She loves me, too. She just doesn't know yet. <laughs> there you go. Sinead, I'm going to give you the robe of truth. Your robe is nice, but the truth sucks. Oh, thanks. She was the one that told me she pitied me because of my computer thing. And, you know, I told her, I said, you know, I, that's just so rude. I don't have any computer skills. I ain't trying to get no computer skills. And her attitude was like you. You were just limiting your world because of your computer skills. And you let your world... You're telling you just stubborn and that you ain't gonna, you know, try nothing that any kind, any way kind of technically challenge. You know that I'm technically challenged. And it's frustrating for me to well, do stuff. So why not focus on the things I could do and feel good about myself? Because it doesn't prevent you from learning anything else. But if I don't want to learn that, where is it written that I got to? Well, what happened from the at the computer? What was going on? It was it just it it was some it, it was, was a little thing. No, miscommunication. It was really miscommunication. Was she it? thought I was talking about something I wasn't talking about. Oh, oh. And so because of that, I can see that where goes back to exactly. seeing where she doesn't exactly. listen. listen. Right. She doesn't listen. What? It, listen, there's a whole thing. What did you say before but that? You wait and I'm getting No, what did you say before? I didn't like, hear you. Why are we trying to even control somebody's conversation? I Let's didn't hear what you mouth. said before. I'm about to tell you. It was I'm something about, about living. I'm about to say it if you ever stop interrupting me. The saying goes, man plan and God laugh. Your plans on what your life was going to be like, life had nothing to do with what God planned us. Okay? To the bad. You know. And so and, your uh, point is I got to learn computer because God changed the plan? You no, know, life comes with all kinds of challenges and obstacles in your way. 
I should embrace that because... I mean, I'm not that literate myself, but... Uh, but I should embrace that because... No, but you can be functional. And I am enough to do what I want to do. to group. Tonight we are going to be talking about Josie. Josie was in the very first starting over house and we have the honor of having her back to the second starting over house to continue her growth and transformation. So I just want to go over some of the highlights so the women in the house can kind of know where you've been, all the challenges you've been through and all the wins you've had. I think the very first thing is tell me what it was like to move in the first time to the starting over house. Um, How pregnant were you? Oh, wow. <laughs> Completely pregnant. I was, I th think, eight and a half months pregnant. Yeah, I was eight and a half months pregnant. Hi, Hi I'm Amy. Hi, I'm Josie. So, Josie Dish, how pregnant are you? Um, I'm, like, doing 20 days. <gasps> wow. The whole thing when I went there is I wasn't sure if I was going to keep her or give her up for adoption. Yeah due to my circumstances and not being stable. I didn't have a home. I wasn't financially prepared. I pretty much feel like I was still a kid getting ready to raise a kid. And one of the things was that um, I didn't know who her father was. Don't forget the big thing is when you left the house. Oh, <clears throat> I didn't give starting over the credit that it should have had and I took off willingly on my own. I left. And we tried everything. Oh, did they? Rain, I have got to go. Oh, you look at Stop it, I have to go. Look at this mirror. Stop it. Look at this mirror. Look, you have to face yourself one day. Why are you doing that to yourself? Look at yourself. Look how you're crying. And beautiful. You got a baby in there, Josie. Why? I put all my uh, emotions into a person, and that was my boyfriend, Jonathan. I pretty much let him made my, make my decisions. But when I came back, I recommitted myself to the process. And, um, and then you had Chloe. And that was the big turnaround. Uh, push, push, push. Give me a push, one more push. Uh, take, a, take a look. Right then I just knew that, I mean, that she was mine and it didn't matter who she belonged to and that I was gonna do the right thing and step forward and take care of my, my daughter. And we totally wanna hear about everything that happened between when you left the starting over house and now your return. But first, I wanna kinda go back and find out a little bit more about you so your roommates can find out more. So let's go to the plasma, please. There she is. That's the most beautiful person, the most strongest. and courageous person I've ever met. That's my grandma. And I want to be just like her. I want to be strong like her. And I want to be independent like her. And I want to raise a family like she did. That's where I can go to talk to her. I go and sit and tell her my problems because I, I, I still need her. I still need her opinion. And when I got pregnant, that's the first place I went. And I laid on the ground and I held the ground. And I hugged it as hard as I could. And I told her I needed her so bad right now. I needed her to tell me what I was supposed to do. Because I didn't have her anymore to do that. And I always wanted to know what her opinion was because it meant the most. And no matter what, she wouldn't judge me. So I still go there. I take Chloe there and I show her that that's Grandma and Grandpa. And that, that it's a place to be comfortable at. It's not a place that I feel scared or upset. It's just a place that I know that I can be close to her, that I know she's still there and I know that I can be with her. Next photo, please. That's my mom. And that's Chloe with her. Um, our relationship was kind of rocky at first. 
we really weren't close, but Chloe tied us together. It really has made us grow. We, um, I had a lot of anger towards my mom. I just instantly was on the D and was like, why didn't you raise me? Why weren't you there? You know, instantly ready to attack. And um, I, from being through the starting over house, we were able to express each other's feelings to each other a lot better. And um, I saw my mom cry really for the first time and tell me that she was so sorry. <laughs> that that's how I felt. And she told me that if she could do it differently, she would. But I think she can, because she loves Chloe more than anything. Mm -hmm. That's the light of my life. That was my eye opener. That made me see a clearer picture that there's more things that are more important in this life than going out and socializing. When you were in the starting over house, the first time, I know one of the reasons you came was to actually decide if you should keep Chloe or not. That yes. was one of your big decisions. Yes. And one of the reasons you just thought, well, do I or don't I, is because you didn't know who the father was. Yeah, that was a big, big one. I mean, it could have been Jonathan. It could have been a childhood friend or a one-night stand that yep. you had because you and Jonathan were having challenges. You felt betrayed by Jonathan. You were hurt. I remember your pain and the tears. And so you went out and used sex as a way to get even. Yeah. That's what it all boils down to. You know, one of the questions you wanted to answer, and I know Jonathan did have a paternity test, because I know that was challenging. We were in the house. Oh, gosh. That was an ongoing battle. Um, the paternity tests were done. So, Josie, who is Chloe's father? 